we're going to look at the one thing today. You have uh, been invited to discover the only thing that is necessary. There are countless options for us these days. We now have more choices or options than in any other time or in any other generation in the history of the world. These options range from our relationships to our time, our work, our entertainment, both physically in reality and virtually on some screen or device. Uh, it uh, gives us opportunities to make choices to what we uh, look like, to what we wear, to where we go, uh, to who we listen to in a moment's notice, or who we will read or study in an instant. Our options simply and seemingly are immeasurable. So with all of these options available to us, isn't considering choosing one thing pretty antiquated, old-fashioned, and really just plain dumb? One thing. Hey, not my words. Those are the words of Jesus. So only one thing is necessary, Jesus said. It was recorded in Luke. Uh, in chapter 10, Luke writes in verse 38, Now, as they were traveling along, he entered a village, and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister called Mary, who was seated at the Lord's feet, listening to his word. But Martha was distracted with all of her preparations. And she came up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the serving alone? Then tell her to help me. But the Lord answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and bothered about so many things. But only one thing is necessary for Mary has chosen the good part which shall not be taken away from her what distracts you I know I have lots of distractions every day I'm sure we all do what does the world offer so many other things to choose from it's almost as if we're being bombarded with choices and options you can even look at a Christian blog site and just be inundated with choices. You know the ones that we go to, uh, they tell you all the things you should be doing to be a better Christian? Did you know that there are four ways every man should be growing personally? That sounds good, right? Four ways. Uh, I want to grow personally, don't you? What does that mean to grow personally? What if I can't grow in the ways that the author of this blog site wants me to grow in? Then what? Well, then maybe I better turn to the four emotional and spiritual battles of leadership. That, that might get me going. I should be more emotional and ready for battle, right? Or what about the four irresistible traits of speakers who connect with their audience? How's that working today? And I'm supposed to be authentic, Transparent, funny, uh, what's the fourth? Um, mm, I can't remember. Uh, I guess I need to get ready for the next option. Six ways to prepare for a pastoral transition. Well, uh, when all else fails, there's always the seven self-care habits you can start today. We all want to you know, care for ourselves better. No better time than the future, so let's start these seven things today. And it's interesting because the blogger said these six steps take as little as 10 minutes to accomplish and make a huge impact on both your work and personal life. Well, what about the seventh step? Did they, did they forget that step? Or am I supposed to come up with that on my own? I don't know. All these things kind of can drive you crazy, can't they? Well, you say you want more? Okay, there's more. Everywhere you go, there's more steps. So now we, we leave Christendom and just go to the secular world and look at Forbes magazine. Everybody respects Forbes. And there's 25 best places to retire in 2016. I don't know. What if I'm not ready to retire? Or I pick someplace inadequate. What if I'll never be ready to retire? Uh, 
Whoa, glad to see there's the next option, top seven credit card offers for those with excellent credit. I always pay my bills. I really need to check out these deals. With the right credit, I can get where I'm going fast. I can find that place to retire and I'll be set. And I can get there fast with the 20 fastest jets. You won't believe who is number one because who wants to be in the 20th fastest jet? And then there's the quizzes that you always see. Quiz, only a true Southerner will know these 13 sayings. Do you know them? So we're always having to prove ourselves. And if I decided to retire in the South and then I don't know the 13 sayings that I'm not gonna fit in, and what if I get there really fast on the fastest jet? What then? Then all the anxiety and fear and um, trying to work harder starts to kick in. I must master more of these steps. There's always something else to do. On and on it goes. So many choices, so little time. But wait, Jesus said there's only one thing. The one thing is listening to God. Amen. It comes into uh, different translations uh, interest, interestingly um, uh, stating, but one thing is needed in the King James, but just one thing is needed in the Good News, but only one thing is needed. Only one thing is essential in the message. There is only one thing worth being concerned about in the New Living. So in his book, uh, Hearing from God, Peter Lord quotes, so the only one thing, so only one thing is necessary, needed, essential, and worth being concerned about if we are going to experience the life Jesus came to give us. Let me read that one more time. So only one thing is necessary, needed, essential, and worth being concerned about if we are going to experience the life Jesus came to give us. Yeah, but you say Jesus lived 2,000 years ago. That was before the internet. Mm -hmm. And Peter Lord, he wrote all this stuff before anyone knew who Al Gore was. So seriously, folks, does God really speak now? Is that a logic, isn't that a logical question to ask? Does God really speak? Did, and then some people may even ask, did he ever really speak? Dr. Charles Stanley, who Eric and I have had the pleasure of seeing live in person, um, and again, uh, just last couple nights ago, uh, he was interviewed by Louis Giglio, the Passion Church, and his son, Andy, which was a great interview, but we saw him live with Pastor Johnny Hunt at In, uh, in Touch Studios, mm -hmm. and it was about a four hour, at least three or four hours, and they had a couple breaks. <laughs> But uh, uh, just a true man of God who just placed his faith uh, long, uh, when, when he first started as a young man, uh, had no money, no father, and yet he had a faith and a, and a desire to, to preach the word. And uh, he fulfilled, God fulfilled that through him by faith. He believes that God did speak and is still speaking today in his book, How to Listen to God. Pastor Stanley thinks God still speaks thinks he speaks through his word. 56 books written about stories covering thousands of years by numerous authors, all having been inspired from hearing God speak and memorializing his words to print. Simply put, Dr. Stanley believes God speaks through the Bible. Dr. Stanley points to Joshua in the Old Testament, a time when Moses is passing the baton to the young Josh to lead God's people to the fulfillment of the promises God had spoken from generation to generation. Joshua 1.7 Only be strong and very courageous. Be careful to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, so that you may have success wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. 
for then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not tremble or be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. So Joshua was hearing God uh, speak to him through Moses in this case, uh, but it's uh, referring to the written word of God through the Old Testament, the Old Covenant. And you know, jo although Joshua and Caleb were the two spies that came back with a good report and were ready to obey God, he witnessed for the next 40 years a lot of failure in God's people. And so this was a reminder that, that he needed to hear, to be strong and courageous. I think it was comforting to him, and I think it's also comforting to us today to, to hear God say to us through his word, be strong and courageous. Is anybody battling against any giants today that just are, uh, seem to be um, overwhelming us? You know, we talked earlier today about just the overwhelming circumstances of our lives. Um, Dr. Stanley also thinks God speaks in a still, small voice through the Holy Spirit. In John 14 26 but the helper the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I said to you and again in John 16 I have many more things to say to you for he will not speak on his own initiative but whatever he hears he will speak I, I have been hearing God speak every time I get out of bed for the last few weeks and it reminds me of Joan and it gives me an opportunity to pray for her. Uh, I, I think I shared with you guys a couple times that for a, about two weeks every time I stood up I almost fell down. Uh, I had a, a just a case of vertigo that kicked in and it literally I literally dropped the first day when it kicked in and I don't know where it came from I know I've had it in the past in minor cases, but this was a severe case, and it came in, and, and God healed me of it. And he uses that, or is using that experience to get my attention and to remind me that other people are suffering too from the same, uh, same disease. And um, they're not, they have not been healed of it yet. And so the Holy Spirit speaks to me every time I get up I have this sensation that the room is not spinning, that everything is okay, and that I need to pray for Joan. Um, so that's just one way that this still small voice speaks to us all. I'm sure he speaks to each one of you in special ways too. Pastor Stanley further notes that God also speaks through other people. Those may not be still small voices. Sometimes those may be a little louder. Sometimes we might need a little louder voices. Uh, in Proverbs 27, 17, iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. I heard somebody say the other day that a wife could also sharpen her husband uh, if he'll turn his ears on. So um, I have, have another little story about that, too. We, all, we use, uh, whenever someone in our family uses an always word or a never word, it's, it's generally speaking trying to get their way. Um, and they throw that big word around to try to uh, confirm their point, their perspective or point of view. And I always say, those are God words. God can only use those words, uh, always or never, because he's the only one that knows everything. And so um, it was a silly little incident, and I've tried to train myself, because it's a habit, we get into habits, of not using those words to set an example for our, my family, our kids, and I walked out of the bathroom and said, the TP is always out. <laughs> and Erica goes, always? <laughs> and so it took me a minute or two to, to remember that uh, and to confess and ask for forgiveness not to use one of God's words, even when it's referring to TP. Um, God um, spoke through Nathan, too, um, to David in Second Samuel. Then the Lord sent Nathan to David, and he came to him and said, and we know the rest of the story. I wrote ouch next to that because those words um, were hard words for David to hear. 
Uh, they were not warm and fuzzy words, but they were words that David needed to hear. And David had a choice. He could have ignored those words, or he could have received those words as words from God, and David did the right thing. Proverbs 1, 5 says, A wise man will hear and increase in learning, and a man of understanding will acquire wise counsel. I hope I learn how to do better in that regard, don't you? Wise counsel always comes into handy, and there's times where I haven't listened to wise counsel or taken wise counsel, and it's been costly. I would like to pause and say that um, in all of these ways that we hear God speak, uh, we, we need to confirm it uh, in his word, uh, especially if we're confused or especially if we, f we feel like we're under attack. That's when we really need to stay in his word to confirm uh, any other source uh, that we are hearing um, uh, or feel like we're hearing God speak. Uh, finally, Dr. Stanley acknowledges that um, it may not be comfortable uh, when uh, God speaks, especially through the circumstances of our life. And I think often that's where we kind of commune with each other is through our circumstances. And uh, that's what our prayer time will be about in a little while. It's about our circumstances. So God speaks through the circumstances of our lives. And some of them may not be comfortable. Um, we talked about the angel that came to uh, the burning bush and spoke to Moses. And that must have been a strange experience, a strange circumstance that God spoke to that bush. And we, uh, we talked about how the bush didn't burn and that uh, the angel of the Lord represented God and spoke. And um, so that was a circumstance that Moses came across. I don't think any of us have had uh, burning bush experiences, but uh, there's been a lot of experiences as you think back to your life where God has spoken to you and it's kind of in a, from a strange perspective that you maybe later sensed that it was God or maybe you knew it was God right then. Some circumstances God speaks through may be painful. The failure of a relationship, uh, a death or a serious illness of a loved one or a financial or uh, even our uh, personal physical strife. Um, I know that we um, we went through a season and are still struggling through a, a season of financial uh, concern. Um, and there was an article written uh, a couple weeks ago in the Christian Index, which is one of the oldest, most respected uh, Christian papers in the state of Georgia. And it was uh, basically talking about a book that a prison inmate had written. And this book uh, uh, talked about how he had learned to find peace in the circumstances of being in prison. And the uh, author of the Christian Index uh, really kind of touted uh, this book. Well, it turned out that the book was written by the former pastor of three different Southern Baptist churches uh, and uh, had embezzled um, uh, $40 million from 100 families, mostly senior adults. Mm -hmm. And th the book doesn't talk about the senior adults that got ripped off. Well, and then the author of the Christian Index really didn't talk about it either. Uh, and it didn't say anything about all the money they took from us. So uh, that was an opportunity for me to hear from God uh, a few years after the fact and kind of rest in the fact that he's taking care of us, uh, that even when the perpetrator is being um, highlighted and uh, a big newspaper, a uh, Christian newspaper, um, it, it's still, that's okay. We have, to, we have to be okay with that. And uh, God told us that, um, that we would be okay. So uh, we're letting him speak to us through circumstances. Some may be painful. You may even hear uh, God speak to you in a blessing or a healing. Uh, if anyone among you is sick, then you must call for the elders of the church and they are to pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will restore the one who is sick and the Lord will raise him up. So uh, I believe that there are opportunities for us to hear God speak in blessing because uh, certainly uh, being a father is a blessing. Uh, having uh, the opportunity to uh, be an elder in the church is a blessing and to, um, to lay hands on others and to pray over them is a blessing. So God speaks to me through those uh, 
of blessings as well. And how beautiful is it when God restores or heals a relationship? What a blessing that is to, to be a part of and to experience. Um, God really does bless us when we submit to him and obey. Uh, Jesus said only one thing is necessary. The one thing, according to Peter Lord, is a living relationship with God, whereby we hear what he has to say to us. Let me read it again. The one thing is a living relationship with God whereby we hear what he has to say to us. You've been invited to the party. God has prepared a banquet for all of us. And if we have accepted that invitation, then we're welcome. But there comes some responsibility with coming to this party. It's just, I guess we could just come and hang out and lay on the couch and, and eat the, the leg of the lamb, but I think there's more to um, this invitation to the party that um, uh, God has invited us to. I think it has to do with listening to him. I think it has to do with participating with him. Um, I think it has to do with anyone who has ears to hear, let him hear. Um, it doesn't have to do with being distracted by this world. It has to do with the one thing, and that's listening to God. All of the things I believe will fall into place as we listen to God, as we listen to him uh, through his word, as we listen to him through his spirit, as we listen to him through others, and we hear him in the circumstances we face each day. He wants you to know him and know how much he loves you. Will you choose to listen to God today? Or will we choose other options? We are so busy with so many options. Again, more than ever before in the history of mankind. Even more than Martha. Remember, she even confronted Jesus with the fact that her brother Lazarus uh, had been dead for four days. Remember the story later. Uh, Jesus could have come back and... Uh, and save Lazarus from, from death, physical death. Uh, but he waited, he lingered four days. And who was the first one to come out and confront him? It was Martha again. So she's not quite there yet. She's still distracted by certain facts because when Jesus wanted to raise her brother from the dead, she was concerned about the smell. She was distracted about what Jesus was about to do, which was perform a miracle to raise her brother from the dead and what all she was concerned about was how bad it would smell. So that's a, a continuation of the story with Martha and in our lives too. We're in this journey with Jesus, learning to listen to him, learning to let the distractions kind of fall to the wayside. And I think um, God honored Martha finally by mentioning her one more time. And this time when the Lord mentioned Martha, the only mention was of her service to the Lord. There was no mention of her trying to tell Jesus what to do or how to do it or tell her sister what to do or how to do it. There was no mention of her needing to be in control. The only mention at the end of uh, the relationship between Martha and Jesus was that she served him. And that was before, uh, right before his death. So no matter where you are today, it's still his story. And he has a role for you to play. If you choose to listen for your part, he will direct you. Thank you, God, for this time to come before you and um, study your word to worship in song and praise. And uh, just know that your presence is among us. we two or more gathered. You are there. and um, We know you're. Uh, your angels surround this church as you promised that all the churches will have angels. You, uh, you set your heads of protection around us and uh, you um, care so much for us and have a role for each one of us to play. We just pray that the distractions would uh, fall to the wayside as we uh, commit uh, our way to the one thing, which is to listen to you and to trust your son Jesus is our, uh, is our life and 
uh, pursued that together as a church, family. 